Alright guys, welcome back to Frugal Homestead. So today I want to talk to you about how we're using our inefficient DACA wood burning heater that we have outside in this building here to kiln dry wood. We are taking an inefficiency and using it to make things more efficient. Now it does have its pros and cons and I'm going to go into that in this video. So let's go inside and check it out. Okay, so as we enter we are going to hear the blower in the wood burning furnace go on and off. But what I want to show you is I installed racking all around the top and down the middle. Now, the point of this, and I have a bunch of wood over here as well, is we are using the ambient heat in this room, which is currently... 81 and the highest it hit today was 93 it says i don't know if you guys can see that on camera but the wood burning furnace is heavily inefficient because we have it outside due to insurance purposes so we pump all our heat and return air back into the house so we're losing all this ambient heat in here now, normally this room can get up to like 100, 120 degrees at the top of the room. Now, it's not heavily insulated, but it does get hot. Now, what we're trying to do here is, this is all cherry that we're going to sell. All this. So what we're doing is we are drawing this product in here. And I plan on putting more shelves up here and here. But what we also want to do, while it does not get as hot down here, it still does get warm. So what we're doing is cutting dead wood standing and drying it here for fuel for the wood burning furnace. So kind of doing double duty. Now there is one big problem and I don't know if you guys can see it. I'll try and get you up here. And that is the humidity. 45 percent now the problem with that kind of humidity is it holds you like caps your temperature so in other words your room here doesn't want to get any hotter because the humidity is so high and as the humidity goes down the temperature goes up so it's kind of one of those things where you've got to find a perfect balance now, I want you to see, because these were all at 30 and 40% and put in here two days ago. Look at the cracks opening up, guys. It's working. The cracks are all opening up. You can see them coming through. They really are starting to show. Let's see if I can get the camera to pick it up. So it's definitely working. But we got to find a way to evacuate some of the air that's in here to get the moisture out and to let the temperature rise. Now something we've been toying with before we even did this was taking the ambient heat up here at the top of the room, piping it down and blowing it under the house. So the area under the house obviously is not heated. So if we can put some heat in there, it's going to give us warmer floors in a warmer house, but by sucking it out from up here and making a circle out of it, we will be expelling some of the moisture. Now, I don't know if that's gonna create more problems in the future. It may be more beneficial just to put it out the wall here and blow it outside. We haven't figured that much out yet. Right now, we're content with allowing the system to run the way it is running. It allows us to dry wood because all of this is wood burner wood that we're just drying out a little bit. Most of it's at about 20% now, it was dead standing, but we want it to finish drying out so it burns really nice. Basically all trash wood in our opinion, we would not sell any of this, but I have no problems burning it in this wood burning furnace. So the long-term goal here is to be able to kiln dry a third or a half cord at a time of cell wood and the bottoms all be full of wood for the wood burner that's just finishing its drying process. 
you know, the outside of it may have a little bit of wet bark on it or whatever. We don't actually cut like cell wood and use it in our wood furnace. We just run around and all the dead standing in our woods or that we get or stuff that's semi punky or anything like that. We just cut that up and burn that. I don't want to sell people dead standing firewood. I want premium product. I want people to know that they're getting the best when they order from us. <clears throat> but at the same time, I need to get this wood dry and this is just byproduct heat. It literally just radiates out the building. It doesn't do anything. It's not real useful. So we're trying to find a way to use it. We just got to learn how to control the humidity in here at the same time. But I think that it turns a bad situation better. I think an optimal situation would be that this was inside the house. The insurance is just not about it. They've made that quite clear. Even though this thing has a full foundation under, it's still considered a manufactured home. And having a wood burner in a manufactured home in Ohio is very problematic. My insurance would go up probably about three grand a year if this was inside the house, maybe more. So while it's inefficient, I think it's a good baseline here. Now in the future, we are going to use mini splits powered by solar to offset the cost. This will be the backup. Whether I'd go get a catalytic one, I'm not sure. But I think you guys can see, you know, for cherry here, if I could do in seven to 10 days, dry a third of a quart of cherry that was 30 to 40% down to about 15, then I think you guys can see the value in that. I'm basically making whatever it costs for my electric bill a month just by stacking the wood up in here and then throwing it out in the truck and selling it when it's done. What do you guys think? Think it's a good idea? I think it's a way to use an inefficient operation. Now we do monitor the temperature and we do monitor the humidity. And I do have an ink bird which will kick on a fan or whatever to get rid of moisture. I do have the mini humidifiers I could put in here, but that's just using more electric. That's what we're trying to get away from. I think what we're gonna try and do is a split between putting some of the heat under the house and some of it evacuating outside. We're gonna to have to do something though. Right now, I basically, when I come out, I'll leave the door open for a few minutes and that lets a lot of the moisture out. The moisture will drop about five points and then it goes again. But like I said, we're only on like two days and they're already showing cracks and we're down to 40%, which makes me think that this may be a non-starter. It may not be an issue because once it drops below 30% from what I've learned with my little freezer kiln is after 30%, it, it's not even a problem. The heat will just start rising and it'll force the humidity down after that. But I'm pretty excited. I'm looking at these cracks opening up and I'm realizing how good this is gonna come out and start working. It may take seven to 10 days, but it ain't hurting nothing. Can you imagine how many third of accords I can push through the rest of the year if this thing starts producing at seven to 10? And I've already got the cherry split and seasoning out there and ready to go back in. And when pulling in like a third of a cord for 120 bucks of this cherry, we'd be paying electric bill every month, but doing it every seven to 10 days. So right now, I think that the best thing to do is check out any comments you guys leave. See if I can get any ideas to improve this because I'm definitely looking for them. I want to make this better. I will put the other shelves in. So I will give you guys an update about how this turns out, this batch. I will crack them open. We'll check some numbers and some other things. But I just wanted to bring you guys this video to show you what I'm doing, because it might give some other people some thoughts on how they have their setup. If you have, say, a garage with a boiler in a back room, maybe you can throw up a divider wall and do something kind of similar, just using the ambient heat. Another idea I had, and I have one in the garage actually, is one of those in pipe, uh, heat reclaimers. I have one on the DACA unit in the garage. So I'm kind of wondering if I pulled that and put it in here, if I could get the temperature even higher in here and maybe be able to burn off some of the moisture a little faster, but time will tell. I'll keep you guys updated. We appreciate you guys coming along. And if you haven't already, and I don't know why you wouldn't have go down, hit subscribe.
hit the notification bell so you see all of our upcoming videos. Make sure you leave us a like. Let me know down in the comments any ideas you have. Really want to make this work. Want to hear your guys' ideas. And we will see you in the next one. Man, it smells good in here. It smells like cherry. But also smells like a swimming pool. Very damp.